Bože, Bože, kde? Okay, a little bit cleaner. Uh, feels a little bit better. Uh, not the best, but um, it's the best it's gonna get in here. Worked pretty hard last night. Um, didn't get too much done as far as footage, um, but got the motor spinning. Got the motor spinning, yeah! Super excited. Um, worked with a buddy of mine, and we plugged this thing in. We had to replace a couple pieces. They were busted, did some ghetto wiring. Pretty fun wiring here. Um, this was our kind of high voltage protection. So we had all of our high voltage here and covered up in little rags so we could work on our little VCU. Next up, I'm going to show you the test rig. Um, didn't have the batteries complete, so I had to set up a little bit of a charger setup to get the high voltage to make the motor run. But the main task of last night was to make sure the code was correct and the motor would spin. And it did. It took about five hours, but we got it going. So I'm going to show you the test setup and you guys can check it out. First off, we got the Manzanita charger. Um, got this on discount. Um, it's a high voltage setup for 50 amps. And I am hooking that straight up. Follow the little wires. To the BDU. This goes to the negative contactor and the positive contactor. Positive contactor goes through a pre-charge circuit. And then to the fuse. And that's the output to the motor. Um, you see positive. And this just goes right back to the negative. Um, upon startup, this one's going to click on immediately, and then I have to hit the pre-charge to leak the energy into the capacitors, and then we can pop the full contactor so we can avoid spark. But yeah, so that's how I get the high voltage to the motor. After that, uh, we're going to talk to the VCU. There's a couple different like five volt circuits that need to go in there to make sure everything's correct. And yeah, so that's it for the test circuit. The batteries still in the works, still assembling, still trying to get everything going, uh, but. Once those are set up, uh, that'll replace this Manzanita. Also, I got a little Surface Pro here we can plug in, check the CAN bus as it comes out. And we got a little pigtail with a with a DB9 sticking out of it, so should be good to go. Uh, we heard it spin last night, and I think what I'll do is I'll set it up, uh, let you guys hear it, and spin it up a little bit. To power the whole circuit, uh, for the 12-volt circuit, I've made this lithium iron phosphate 12-volt battery. Same setup as the high voltage batteries, but I've got them in 4S, 4P with some discharge bypass circuit. Um, so that's gonna power the 12 volt circuit and that's gonna set up everything from the pump. Excuse the mess, but that's the fuse box and here are the switches to control everything. Coming over to the throttle and the brake, um, last night found out we had an issue with, with one of the throttle. So we actually ended up putting a potentiometer in its place, works just fine. This is a hall sensor that sweeps through. This is just a 50K ohm um, potentiometer that we can control the throttle with so this will turn the throttle on this will be the brake I'm not going to go too wild with it because there's no coolant we're going to turn the manzanita on there we go so now we have high voltage between those two right there I'm not going to touch them because it's about 380 volts and what I'm going to do is actually cover this bad boy up so that we don't have any mishaps with tools or anything so I'll be making a, a nice little like cover that goes over the top of this later on but for right now for testing it's easy to have it accessible so right here we have the motor output shaft and uh, what's gonna happen there is there's a piece that goes on um, this will be the sprocket that's welded to it um, and then after that there's a cap that goes in place a bolt goes right through there, and then an outboard bearing support that goes over the top of that, and additionally a plate that bolts it to the, the actual body of the motor. So any sort of torque that's applied will be transferred into this plate, and it will keep the bearings from wearing out inside the motor under large torque. But right now we're just going to make it spin, so let's get this stuff off here so it can come flying off. Before we get started, we got to flash the ECU. So we're getting CAN bus messages. Uh, we're going to flash the VCU. The 
be compiling. And we are done uploading, so take this back out. Plug her back in. Flip this bad boy on. Negative contact is gonna pop open. And should be able to come over here. Get confirmation that we're getting about 12 volts to the VCU. We got the blinky lights on the VCU slash Arduino. This is a can shield on top of an Arduino setup. Um, and then we got our five volt setup for all the feedback for the throttle, the brake and everything else. After we have turned on the main bike power and we got 13 volts going back, we're gonna energize the pre-charge. Give it about a second and then we go to the main. All right, so now we are at high voltage. Now that we got the bike on, you can hear the motor humming. We're gonna take the potentiometer. We're just gonna turn it the tiniest bit. There we go. She's spinning. All right, so I'm super excited that we got this motor running. It took a lot of work. It was about five hours last night of just messing with the wiring harness, trying to figure out what was wrong with it. But um, that means it works. That means it's ready to go. That means that I'm going to blow this thing apart. I'm going to finish off some of the welding that I got to do. And uh, yeah, after that, it goes to paint, comes back in with the batteries, and we should be ready for some test runs. So can't promise how long that's going to take. might be about a month. But I really appreciate you watching. Uh, be sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, any comments, dislikes, you know, anything you got coming towards me, any suggestions, I would love to hear it. So thank you so much. Have a good one. Hey.